Hello, everybody, and welcome to the fourth of the DRBF Insight webinar series for Region 2, DABs in the FIDIC Gold Book. We have been scheduled for an hour, but we may go for longer if you have many questions for us. I am uh, Georgiana de Grich, a member of the DRBF Board of Directors Region 2, representing Europe, and I'm your host for today. For those of you new to DRBF, the Dispute Resolution Board Foundation is celebrating this year its 25th anniversary being established in 1996 as a nonprofit organization by a group of professionals involved in construction dispute resolution. Their goal was to promote the use of the dispute board process and to serve as an educational resource and information exchange for owners, contractors, and dispute board members. It may be of interest to note that the RBF is publishing a DB manual, a guide to best practices and procedures. The RBF has also published last year a best practice guidelines for virtual dispute board proceedings that comes with a checklist for dispute board members. The DB manual makes extensive reference to the FIDIC suit of contracts, both 99 and 2017 editions, but also to the gold book. So please check our website for more information. The uh, design build operate approach to contracting combines design, construction and long-term operation and maintenance of a facility into one single contract awarded to a single contractor who will usually be a joint venture or consortium representing all the skills called for in a DBO arrangement. And essentially to the success of a true DBO contract depends on the commitment of the contractor to complete project. The format of a DBO arrangement can be based on either a greenfield scenario, a design build operate, or a brownfield scenario, operate design build. Either is quite common, and however, the contractual requirements and procedures are quite different. FIDIC has chosen to produce a document based on the DBO greenfield scenario with a guide containing guidelines on the changes necessary to cover a brownfield arrangement. It also chosen that the most useful period of time to consider was a 20 year of operation. Again, giving guidelines if a shorter period was required. The dispute board manual will um, quote, uh, state that uh, the gold book features a standing DB during the design book period, which is replaced by a standing one person DB for a five year term, a period renewable by agreement of the parties and the DB member the so-called operation service DAB. But we will hear more about the specifics of the gold book and its dispute boards from our speakers today. And I'll start by introducing Victoria. Victoria Tyson is a director of Corbett & Co International Construction Lawyers Limited, a contentious construction lawyer with over 20 years experience in international construction law disputes. She acts for governments and ministries, international contractors and consultants. She has particular expertise in complex international arbitration and specialist knowledge of the fitted forms of contract. Victoria is a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, is part of the executive group of the DRBF UK and a member of the Chartered Institute of Building. She is a co-author of the FIDIC 2017, a practical legal guide she writes practice notes for Lexis on FIDIC, and she has partnered with the Institution of Civil Engineers to update its e-learning courses and also contributes to other publications. Dr. Gert Sebastian Herk is a solicitor registered at the Berlin Bar, and for the past 30 years, he has been partner and senior partner of Dr. Herk Stiegelmeier and Kalagen, and has been working in Europe, the Middle East, Africa, and Asia. Author of several books and articles in French, English, and German on FIDIC contracts, and co-author of the book FIDIC for Practitioners, Dr. Hoek is acting also as arbitrator, a president list adjudicator from 2009, a mediator, court expert, and also a fully accredited FIDIC trainer. He has a friendly review. He was a friendly reviewer of the FIDIC Gold Book, the FIDIC updates, and the FIDIC subcontract form, and is acting as the legal advisor of FIDIC Task Group 9 subcontract design bill and of the Task Group 11 operating design build. He's a lecturer at Lufana University in Germany and a director of the university program Certificate of Advanced Studies International Contract Administration Engineer. 
He's also a member of the German and Japanese FIDIC Disputes Adjudication Assessment Panel and the uh, DRBF country representative for Germany. Jared Monaghan is the chartered engineer with some 30 years experience in the delivery of major construction projects in Ireland and internationally. Is a fellow at the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, a CDR accredited mediator and a member of the Engineers Ireland Arbitration, Conciliation and Adjudication Panels. He is an experienced ADR professional and is appointed regularly as arbitrator, adjudicator, mediator and conciliator. Gerard is a member of the Ministers Panels of Adjudicators established in accordance with the provisions of the Irish Construction Contracts Act 2013. Gerard is former chairman of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, the Irish branch, and is the DRBF country representative for Ireland. So welcome Victoria, Sebastian and Gerard. And I would like to ask Sebastian to please start us um, walking us through the uh, specific of the gold book and its dispute boards. And I will um, share my screen in a second. So good morning or wherever you are. Good day. <coughs> Thank you <coughs> very much for your warm welcome, uh, Georgiana. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> I uh, uh, am invited to start with uh, some uh, preliminary remarks regarding the use of FIDIC, uh, the FIDIC Gold Book, um, and uh, for which purpose it was made. Um, presumably, it's good to have a small overview on the timeline, which you see here. So, as Georgiana has pointed out, it is a design, build, operate uh, <coughs> contract form which means that uh, we have under one umbrella, a design, a construction phase, or combined design and construction phase, plus uh, um, an assumed period of uh, 20 years operation. Um, uh, again, under one umbrella, one single responsibility of one contractor, uh, who is supposed, of course, to bid. You see this on the left-hand side, pre-contractual pre phase for the whole period of design, build, plus operation. So just continue, please, uh, Georgiana, slowly. So you see here the bullet points. So we have a commencement date as usually, uh, as usual under FIDIC. Uh, um, here we don't have a, uh, an engineer. We have an, uh, an employer's representative, but this is just a change of name. In principle, it's nothing else than the engineer under FIDIC yellow. Uh, we have uh, not a, we don't have a taking over certificate um, at the end of design build, rather we do have a, a commissioning certificate because we don't hand over, there is no taking over, uh, rather there is simply a test on completion and then we start with the operation period. So the starting point for uh, the more important phases uh, uh, of operation is the commissioning certificate. Uh, and uh, towards the end, after the expiry of the um, operation service period, um, a further certificate will be issued by the employer's representative, um, which is called the contract completion certificate. So we have design, build, and operation. Um, please continue. Uh, <clears throat> which means <clears throat> that we have in mind um, a design and construction period as usual. I will may have I will have a time for completion in this regard. We might link this uh, again to delay damages, of course. Uh, <clears throat> and then thereafter, there is the operation period. And I've broken it down into a practical example of design, build, and commissioning. And then we do have the retention period after the uh, so-called. Uh, <clears throat> Um, commissioning certificate was issued, which is similar to the DNP, uh, the defect, uh, defect notification period, and the FIDIC yellow. But of course, we, we don't have uh, uh, much of similarity insofar as uh, we don't have a handover taking over, and uh, the contractor is still in charge to do anyway everything. So we are more or less only talking about uh, the treatment of retention monies, which were collected or deducted. Uh, during the design build period and will be uh, released finally at the end of the retention period. And then thereafter we do have um, again 
uh, nine years, uh, 19 years of operation broken down in uh, a particular uh, sequence of activities um, and uh, also broken down into uh, five years uh, slots. Uh, the five-year approach uh, is due to uh, the idea of including an asset replacement fund in the contract amount, which means that the contractor does not only bid for design and build, rather he bids for design and build operate, including the maintenance, uh, and meaning the normal maintenance, plus um, major replacements where, where it is necessary to replace um, items which have a life cycle which is longer than five years each. Uh, uh, so the overall period is mentioned, uh, and we do have a particular approach also to the parties, uh, who, to, to the persons who are involved. Now we do have uh, an employer's representative. Um, we do have a contract and employer as usual, and uh, later we do have uh, a, an additional idea of an auditing body uh, to be appointed um, uh, before the commissioning certificate will be issued and uh, which will be in place uh, until the end of the operation period. Uh, and uh, uh, this board, uh, this, this body is uh, supp supposed to report uh, <clears throat> to both parties on uh, the items put in the terms of reference for the auditing body, particularly we will have to look at uh, SLAs uh, as agreed between the parties. So please continue uh, quickly. So we uh, <laughs> come back to the idea of uh, design but operate, please continue. And we have again the commencement date, <clears throat> we have again the commissioning certificate, we have again the contract completion certificate. Continue, please. <clears throat> uh, we're going through the crowbar game phase, the construction uh, phase, and then uh, the commissioning certificate will be issued. Now we have uh, to look at how the operation service, which may include uh, the, com uh, the uh, idea of handback requirements, which might mean at the end of uh, the operation service, a uh, yeah, intensive re refurbishment um, phase <clears throat> where a lot of things will have to be replaced, rebuilt, um, redone, whatever, uh, <clears throat> which uh, means that at the end of uh, the, uh, the, the operation service, uh, um, uh, a lot of um, very important uh, works um, may have to be carried out by the contractor. But this is um, an idea which is uh, on top of what you usually agree on. The basic assumption is that you will hand over the rubbish as it is at the end of the 20 years period, which makes the things much more uh, uh, easy because you don't have to consider uh, the life cycle after the end of that period, uh, which is called operation period, okay? Go further. Uh, we do have testing and whatever. Uh, we do have a lot of uh, documents which uh, explain what means handback requirements in practice <clears throat> regarding lifts, uh, air conditioning, or whatever you might have in mind, and the building in itself. Go further. Uh, but before, uh, again, um, we can hand over the, the rubbish as it is, a joint inspection <coughs> um, shall be done in order to identify those items which require further attention and also activities from the contractor. And again, all these activities will have to be included in the uh, accepted contract amount. So everything is covered in principle, there's one price for everything, all inclusive, okay. I, I talk as long as you like. <laughs> so I have um, here the idea of uh, the um, um, gold book while requiring uh, uh, the employer to appoint the employer's representative. Uh, and um, we have the auditing body on the right hand side. I think it will come by the next. So, John, the first the yellow, the, the white book for the representative, and then the auditing body. Yep. And the DAB, not to forget. So, we do have an auditing body here on, 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 as a surplus uh, because uh, this is a new feature. It had been a new feature where we had never had that before. But it's an independent body to report uh, to are both parties and the employer's representative um, on compliance. Uh, this is what is uh, more or less meant. We do have already some ideas just to mention that, that uh, which means that uh, uh, the auditing body should also avoid disputes, uh, which is a, a World Bank approach. I'm not sure whether this was really 
uh, one of the best ideas. But anyway, uh, that's my my personal view, because we do have our dispute adjudication board uh, actually, of course, which uh, shall provide uh, the the parties with informal assistance uh, to avoid disputes and, of course, uh, in in the event necessary, it is necessary, to, uh, we will have to resolve these disputes uh, on our way to completion and uh, then thereafter during the operation service period. So uh, we can quickly go through just uh, to make this uh, a full slide, if you don't mind. So we have here the idea on the DAB. So the employer's representative <clears throat> is of course present from the very beginning. Uh, DAB should be in place uh, um, closely also after the commencement date. Um, and this uh, appointment will be for the whole construction period until the commissioning certificate shall be issued or will be issued. Uh, you will have to consider probably uh, an extension um, of what FIDIC su suggests because we do have still retention monies, you remember that. And um, to, for, for practical reasons, it might be appropriate that disputes um, will be referred to the DAB, which have been in place um, to look at uh, regularly uh, the work and the development of the work, the progress. Uh, and then, of course, it is much more easy for this board to um, look at uh, de defects, for instance, and disputes arising out of the defective work. Um, FIDIC would say, well, the, the, this DAB will be discharged uh, upon the, uh, the issue of the commissioning certificate, and then a new uh, DAB phase will start with new, an annual DAB, a single member DAB for uh, the overall period of uh, operation, but divided in uh, terms of five years each, which are, uh, are possible to um, 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 renew. Okay, <clears throat> go further. So the auditing body uh, is there uh, to report. I've mentioned that for those who are interested in um, more details, you may read here uh, the, uh, more about the idea of uh, uh, the auditing body uh, when it is appointed, who can be a, a, an auditing body, a member, and what to do. Go further, please. And it was also uh, mentioned already uh, that uh, well, the, uh, the, there are some ideas uh, which contradict with the overall approach of uh, what a DAB should do. So you should carefully look at whenever you're involved in um, World Bank finance or uh, ADB finance projects because both seem to have an, a more large idea about uh, the use of uh, the auditing body than it might be practical and reasonable. Go further, please. So the practical approach, uh, um, which uh, I've here um, put uh, based on a hospital project in which I was involved or involved. Uh, so you will have, of course, to look at the particular requirements and performance guarantees, so the KPIs, the SLAs, uh, for um, <coughs> um, putting uh, everything properly in place. Uh, and for the um, time uh, after the commissioning certificate, of course, are the KPIs and SLAs are a kind of benchmark. Uh, for every day's work um, and where the uh, body will or the auditing body will report to both parties and the DAB uh, will uh, still be involved, uh, of course, uh, as a dispute avoidance body <clears throat> predominantly um, with, uh, of course, also the option uh, to be involved, become involved in disputes, if any. Uh, though, of course, uh, frequently uh, there's not really a need to, to look at uh, this. At, uh, though, of course, at the end, um, if you have massive uh, handback requirements in mind, uh, the importance of the DAB will uh, again increase dramatically because lots of issues may arise at that time. So this is what uh, we have, the reporting of uh, the auditing body, uh, but we have also, of course, a DAB in place. Okay. So the SLAs and KPIs <coughs> are uh, something which is important. Uh, <coughs> Uh, to be looked at uh, in order to understand the performance of uh, the books after commissioning um, in, in, and uh, how to and what, what is necessary in order to keep uh, the, uh, the, uh, the books fit for purpose over the whole period of time. Uh, and uh, things will then, of course, develop. Please go further. Because based on uh, the design, um, contractor's proposal, contractor's detailed design and uh, systems operation, uh, then we will have to look at uh, further developments and compliance. Go further, please. 
and particularly if we regard uh, we look at uh, the uh, the SLAs, uh, uh, which help us to understand whether the uh, contractor meets a benchmark every, every day. Go further. And in all uh, these activities, after the uh, commissioning certificate was issued, uh, we do need, uh, we, we have involved uh, the DAB plus uh, the auditing body, as you have uh, now in mind. And uh, we will have, of course, to look at uh, the uh, differences uh, <clears throat> and uh, the allocation of responsibilities uh, carefully uh, in order not to uh, mix these uh, too much. Okay. <clears throat> so we do have a standing DAB in mind uh, during the uh, design build period, and we do have also standing DAB thereafter, but we do have only a sole member DAB in mind the uh, later period of operation. So we have uh, two different uh, DABs. There's also different voting um, in uh, the FIDIC Gold, Gold Book for uh, the uh, DAB before and after, though, of course, um, uh, there is a reference uh, in general terms uh, to the uh, decision-making process uh, in one clause only. But in principle, we have two, two, two uh, different uh, uh, clauses in sub clause 20 and uh, in clause 20 regarding the uh, main uh, um, DAB during the design build period and then subsequently the other one. So um, I think it's uh, obvious that uh, we do have the regular services, um, including the informal assistance <clears throat> uh, and uh, including site visits, particularly discussions and so on which shall help both parties to avoid disputes, uh, which is um, predominantly, of course, important during uh, design and build. And then thereafter, uh, uh, you may also have from time to time disputes. And I've just broken down the terms into five-year terms um, um, in order to understand the, the, uh, the uh, sequence. And also the overlapping approach, uh, which you see in the middle, where we do have the retention money period, uh, where it is possible to think about uh, the option to extend the term of the DAB for design build uh, to um, disputes uh, which may arise uh, out of uh, defective work um, after the commissioning certificate was issued. Okay, I think this is what's more or less what I have had in mind. Yes, thank you very much. And I hope I did not uh, take too much time. Uh, from the others. Thank you. Thank you, Sebastian. Well, it was quite useful to go back and, and have a full view so we could understand better what uh, Gerard is going to uh, tell us right now about the more specific of the of the differences into um, into the two periods of operation. Gerard? Yes, good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, or good afternoon, as the case may be. I, I think you can see my, my single slide there. What, what I want to do for the next five or 10 minutes, perhaps, is really to look at typical issues that, that, that arise uh, and that may present themselves for consideration to the DABs under a fitted gold form of contract, whether that be at the design build phase or the operational service phase. And, and, and typically, the issues tend to be quite technical in, in nature. A lot of my, my experience is really based on water and wastewater treatment plants. Um, so you, you talk about process engineering, process science for the most part. And inevitably, once the event is proved and the liability established, you know, quantum quantum derives from the claim or otherwise. But I think it's, it's important, uh, certainly, that DAB members would have some understanding or are capable of, of learning or understanding the kind of typical issues that would arise. But by way of background, Georgiana introduced me at the start. Uh, I should, probably should have put in my bio that I, in addition to being a, uh, an arbitrator and conciliator, I also practice as an employer's representative stroke engineer under FIDIC forms of contract, mostly FIDIC yellow and FIDIC gold. Um, in, in, Ar in Ireland internationally. In Ireland, <clears throat> the, from about the year 2001, new water and wastewater treatment plants were developed under a, a design build operate model um, with, a, with an operation service period typically of 20 years. Um, okay. at, at, at the time, 
obviously the fitted gold form of contract didn't exist. It, it came in in 2008. So the Irish government, the local authorities used a modified fitted orange, which is a design build turnkey form of contract with the operational service requirements kind of parachuted into the particular conditions. It, as a model, it, it worked very well. Um, and up to 2013, uh, sorry, 2014, a national utility in Ireland called Irish Water was established that took over took over all the water assets, the sewers, the pipelines, the treatment plants, uh, took them away from the local authorities and acted as a single utility. And quite wisely then, instead of, you know, they continued with the DBO model, but instead of um, relying on a modified fitted orange, they quite wisely took on the fitted gold approach, uh, which made good sense. So I, I in the last 20 years, I think I've, I counted last week, I've over 80, I've experienced of delivering over 80 water or waste water treatment plants under a fitting design build operate model, either gold or the modified orange. So I, I, Irish Water used DABs for water waste water treatment projects with a capital value of north of 15 million. Uh, and from my experience as EOR, the DABs are very, very useful and they tend to work. I'm also involved in a number of international projects, particularly a, a huge project, a World Bank funded project in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia for the eastern, the entire eastern catchment of the city at the moment. And we're at tender stage uh, for a new treatment plant and pump stations outfall pipe under, under fitted gold. So I, I kind of set that out by way of background in terms of experience. So the issues that, that you can see in the screen there on, just, on the left. Just hand, a second, just a second. Sorry to interrupt you, you're right. That's that's a huge experience and the, the biggest I've ever had in, into the gold book. Um, I would like to ask you, when going through the uh, typical issues, if you could actually give us a specific example from your experience from, from uh, water treatment plants or wastewater treatment plants, that will be, I think, uh, very good for, for our audience to actually see it working in, in practice. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank yeah. you. So, so I, I, I've, I've split the, 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 the issues typically into design build phase on the left hand side of the screen of the slide and the operational service on, on, the, on the, the right hand side of the slide. So I'll start with the DB phase and, and the first issue there is, and, and Sebastian very, very kindly and very usefully set out the, the it was a refresher of the timelines, etc. And these are issues that present themselves to the EOR, and if the EOR can't resolve them, or even if you can, you know, they also present themselves for dispute avoidance to the D, to the DAB. So, design changes from the tender stage submission. So, your your, your contractor proposes that you receive a tender stage, okay, and they're accepted and you're appointed. When you get into actual doing detailed design, oftentimes you find as EOR that the contractor goes back with a revised proposal, a revised detailed design from what he proposed at tender stage. So by way of example, you, you, instead of a, a reinforced concrete clarifier settlement tank, he might propose a concrete cast in situ, um, or he may propose a different, different form of anaerobic digester for treating sludge than he proposed at tender stage. And of course, you know, the EOR is, 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 is left in the position where they need to determine is, is, the, is the asset that you're going to get of the same value, should there be a saving, should there not? And these issues need to be worked work through. Likewise, the value engineering proposals, oftentimes uh, contractors under subclass 13.2 will, will arrive with a proposal to change a, a type of pump to offer a new manufacturer of your centrifuge for, for sludge dewatering from what they offered at tender stage. Um, they might offer it, it's a lower spec uh, piece of kit and the, but they could say it'll do the same job, same performance levels, and you can get into a discussion or potential dispute as to the, what the value engineering savings are. Is it reduction of risk? Is it reduction of, of program? Or is it cost saving? Unforeseeable physical conditions. Those of us that are involved in construction projects will, 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 will know this, whether it's fitted gold or fitted yellow, it's no difference. Subclass so 412, it's ground conditions typically. There's nothing particularly. Uh, different uh, with the fitted gold from what we might see under other forms of contracts. Subclause uh, 9.4, delays caused by authorities. I, one particular example I have was working on a, a major wastewater treatment plant in, in, in Cork, um, in, in, in Cork City in the south of Ireland. There was a three or four, was it four kilometer eyefall pipe from the treatment plant itself to, to the sea, to discharge point. 
Um, the local authority there were, were, were responsible for arranging uh, a road open license to allow the outfall pipe to be laid in the carriageway. They were delayed with their paperwork uh, and the contract was very significantly delayed. Uh, you couldn't commission this plant, et cetera. So there's a real issue there that needed to be dealt with. And, and the dispute board in that instance, you know, worked very well in terms of avoiding the dispute. It, it is clear what the, where the issues lay, where the responsibility lay, and, and, and we were able to avoid the dispute and come to a sensible commercial arrangement. Likewise, a, a testing, the issues testing and commissioning, issues can arise vis-a-vis the water quality, the performance consent standards that you're trying to achieve, um, the, the kind of runtime, the factory access, acceptance tests that need to be carried out, or the site acceptance tests of your pumps, of your clarifiers, of your centrifuges. And there, there's quite technical issues there related to the process that you need to understand. So, so Georgiana, that's just a flavor, and I'm, I'm very happy to answer questions to this in due course. That's just a flavor of, of some of the issues that I've seen arise uh, at the design build phase and can present themselves to the, to the DAB. Um, I just... be, for me, the, the most interesting ones were, were the fact that you, you were able to, to deal with certain aspects in, in, in a very short period of time and, and solve the issues uh, yes. very fast. We, we used traditionally in Romania, if you want, the gold book, the yellow book, not the gold book. And when we had um, severe, severe issues with, uh, with one uh, case of a water treatment plant um, that was um, um, using as source, the Danube, and the fact that the tests passed, but um, sort of at, at the you know basic minimum requirements, and as soon as taking over uh, took place, there was a huge problem with flocculation, and, and it couldn't be solved. They've tried everything for for almost a couple of years, and I think if it would have been actually a gold book then perhaps the contractor would have been more interested in solving the, the issue than, uh, than it was. And, and again, with the delays caused by authorities, we, we had a case where I think Sebastian might remember a um, marine discharge where the um, duck uh, uh, bill valves were suddenly not able to be purchased uh, within EU. And um, that made them not, um, um, eligible expenses uh, for the project. It was a project financed by um, EU, co-financed by EU MDBs and uh, national budget. And even if the, the, the amount was not a significant amount, the fact that they were not eligible anymore created uh, so huge problems that the project was actually delayed for two, three years. And, and we talk about a small amount, $20,000 or 20,000 euros that blocked a whole 90 something million project for two, three years. Um, and there was no DAB in place. And again, uh, it was, yes. was huge. So I believe that perhaps if, uh, if it would have been a gold book, um, again, the contractor would have uh, perhaps more interest and would have um, acted in a, in a different way. And of course, a, a DAB would have been more than welcome. Absolutely, you, you, make, a, you make a number of very interesting points there. Duck bill, duck bill valves can be difficult to procure at the best of times. The number of manufacturers are very, I, I've had numerous issues with those over the years. And they're, from a technical point of view, they're tricky to get to operate because you need to have the right head of pressure. Uh, I won't go down that road. So, uh, I feel your pain on that. But uh, the, the most important thing I think you mentioned there, Georgiana, is, is the benefits of the gold book, you know, where the contractor is there for five or preferably 20 years, he, you know, he has a real interest in making sure that it works, making sure that the asset is robust and of good quality, uh, and making sure that the tests and completion pass. You know, he, he's incentivized there and it's, it's the right form. About four years ago, I was involved in a project and it's a 400,000 p. Uh, wastewater treatment plant project again in, in, in a city called Kataya in, in Turkey uh, and it was procured on a fitic, a fitic yellow approach uh, with a kind of a one year it, it wasn't really called operators of process proving extended process proving it went well but as you say a, a fitic gold form of contract would have been, would have been better yeah really. um, definitely so look I, I, maybe I'll just finish then I'll just continue to the operational Please. service period 
as, as, as again, Sebastian very kindly mentioned, I mean, this is this is this is this is a separate DAB required for that stage, and it's for for five blocks of five year five year terms uh, on it. And and again, it can be very very technical issues arising, and it mostly re relates to the interim payment certificate certification valuation process, but you're looking at you know suspended solids biochemical oxygen demand flocculation quite technical chemical terms and you know again it ultimately relates to money and payment so so, so a couple of typical ones that i i've seen is 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 the subclause 107 which is you know failure to reach production outputs and that could be a that can be a contractor risk or it can be a, an employer risk and, and where it typically links to an employer risk is saying in the case of overloading or underloading of a wastewater treatment plant and and you know i think we can all intuitively understand that if your plant is overloaded your your your, your pumps and your mixers and your aerators and your air blowers are working longer and harder um, and your, your fixed and variable charges may not cover that perversely and I don't want to get too technical again. Underloading sometimes causes more of a problem because you can't get your process operating properly and you've got older issues, etc. So you can have real issues there uh, that you need to understand. Um, typically, uh, monthly valuations or quarterly valuations are done on a, on a fixed and variable charge regime. So you have a fixed cost, which can, you know, price at tender stage of typically 75 to 80% of your, your cost, your monthly costs are fixed for just maintaining the asset. And then you'd have a variable element based on flow, based on BOD, based on water quality, based on suspended solids, methane, et cetera. So, so typical issues can arise there in terms of the, the meters cube of water in, kilograms BOD per day, et cetera. You need to understand those because they have a real financial impact in terms of the variable charge. Uh, quality assurance and site data under subclause 4.9 and 4.10 and I'm linking these back to payments again because if your if your flow meter isn't calibrated or your suspended solids meter isn't calibrated or your mixer data you, if you can't rely upon it or it's not reading or your base and estimates you, you can be out by a significant factor in terms of your quantities and again that is a huge implication on your variable charging mechanism and very many disputes can arise there if you're not uh, if you're not sufficiently configured to deal with that and make sure that your 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 your, your data is, is is calibrated asset replacement funds under subclass 14.18 and maintenance reserve funds under 14.19 and i think again sebastian mentioned these in passing these are very very interesting and demanding areas and you need to be alert to them so typically over taking the asset replacement fund uh, first of all typically over 20 year operation service period at this at tender stage, you, you'll put in a, a fund, you'll bid a fund effectively to say in year four, I'm going to replace the chlorine pumps or the sludge pumps. In, in, in year 13, I'm going to have to put in a new centrifuge uh, for sludge dewatering. Okay. And you draw down those fundings to do that work at the time. But if, if your plant has been over or under loaded, right, over the years, your, your sludge dewatering equipment will have, will have will have um, deteriorated quicker than you're expecting. Okay, so suddenly you need that money, you need that 2 million euro for your new uh, centrifuge in year eight, as opposed to year 13, and the employer might present you don't, or year 12. So there's real real issues there to get involved in. And likewise, um, the maintenance reserve fund, uh, which is effectively the last five years of the 20 year period for 5% of the interim payment amounts are, are put into a reserve fund to make sure that test the completion again and the asset is handed over properly at the end so real issues again around process around the robustness of the asset can, can arise there um, and look uh, i hope that gives a flavor perhaps of, of the typical issues that that, that can arise uh, and I'm, I'm obviously very happy to discuss or answer any questions that arise in, in due course so thank you very much Georgiana. Thank you, Gerard. Um, that's uh, very interesting. And I think one of the, uh, what I would be curious would be how many times the operation uh, service uh, DAB uh, would have been facing issues related to the handover? At the end, at the end of the, at the operational service? Uh, yes, yes, because we know from practice that 
um, they do their best during the 20 years operation period. They do the patching up, if you want, just before the handing over. But as soon as they take over, there will be issues. Yes. Uh, and would the uh, operational service uh, DAB be well equipped to, to deal with any, any kind of, uh, of taking over or final taking over issues, or we have to, to, to consider a whole new approach, a new DAB? Well, once at the end of the 20 year period, okay, and once the asset is handed back to the employer, okay, yes. the, the operational service DAB role ter terminates. And as you quite rightly say, issues can arise then fairly quickly afterwards. And oftentimes issues arise because they put in a new caretaker or new operators that don't understand. It's like kind of, well. yeah. it's kind of like tuning a it's kind of like tuning a guitar or a harp or something. They don't understand how it works. But certainly in the in the maintenance reserve period, in, in the last five year period, the DAB uh, will and all, sh should be very very active there. Uh, in, in, in kind of, of the voids of the disputes and getting really into the into the mix of things and making sure that the issues are arise or are, are issues that arise are dealt with certainly. But you know there is there's a point to be made, I think maybe on your I hadn't thought about it before. Should should a, a DAB continue maybe for the first two years after the, the taking it yeah. yeah, has, has terminated. <laughs> it's an interesting point that I hadn't that I hadn't thought about, but uh, Food for okay, okay. May, may I, uh, yes. if I may, yes, uh, one, one note and one question. Um, the, uh, the, the problems at the end of the operation service are arising out of uh, the handback or the taking over um, are um, um, something which um, uh, you make here on your own because FITIC in itself did say there is no problem because we hand it over as it is. There's no life cycle, uh, lifespan, nothing. There's uh, the no operation hour um, retained or whatever. So you just hand it over as it is. But uh, you st the problems start where you, on your own, define handback requirements, which must be met. And then probably you also forecast a further lifespan of five years and without maintenance or something like that. This was just a note. My question is, isn't it really um, uh, the, the, the bigger challenge or the big challenge of the Gold Group uh, that we do have uh, much more influence of operation, meaning that you do have to have, I guess, much more knowledge about process engineering and problems uh, which uh, <clears throat> uh, arise out of uh, the operation, uh, yeah. rather than to look at design build. And whenever you are involved in design build, that you will have also to have in mind what means really operation, because a normal contractor under normal circumstances will hand it over. For him, operation means a test. And that's all. <laughs> and, and you have uh, uh, here 20 years of uh, business with you. Right. Yeah, yeah, I agree. You're, you're absolutely right, Sebastian. I mean, it's, it's, it's that, that knowledge and that mindset and under, understanding of, of, the, of the, the, the process, the science behind it is really is, is what's demanded of, 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 of a DAB. You know, it, it's wrong to say that a DAB member couldn't learn sufficiently or couldn't educate him or herself to a sufficient level, um, but I, I think on, on bigger- Looking at the lawyers? <laughs> yeah, at, 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 at a bigger, I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm an engineer, I'm a civil engineer, and, and some of the issues are beyond my, sometimes beyond my, you, you know, you're talking about how bugs and biological bugs actually react in your reactor. They're, 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 it's quite specialized, but what you need is, is, is to be sufficiently confident in your own ability to, to be able to learn or understand what the issues are. And right. I think it's certainly, it's, it's certainly, it, it would merit if you've, you, you know, your three person, it's, 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 it's a one person uh, DAB at the operation service. That person should really ha have some engineering or, or, or technical skills or have the capability of learning them, I would suggest, Sebastian. Thank you both. I would like to, to ask Victoria um, about, um, if, if she would like to add anything in particular about uh, what has been said in so far, or if uh, she would like to, to proceed with um, some other idea. Uh, up to you, Victoria, please. Well, I, I will proceed with um, um, my, my part shortly, but, but um, like Jerry, I'm really interested in this idea of extending the um, dispute uh, board for the design build period for, to deal with those defects. It's an interesting point. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Victoria, please. 
Yeah. So, so, well, good morning from a very sunny London here today. Um, my topic is much drier than Jerry's to topic, of, unfortunately, but I'm going to trot through some of the FIDIC Gold Book innovations relevant to the resolution of disputes that were considered worthy enough of consideration in the 2017 editions. And I'm just going to run through the points on my slide very quickly. So the Gold Book was the first to introduce the definition of the word dispute under both the Philip Gold Book and the 2017 editions, a dispute cannot proceed under Clause 20 or under Clause 21 unless it is a dispute as defined. It was also the first to include the definition of notice, and this definition has not changed in the FIDIC 2017 editions. In respect of a contractor's claim, the FIDIC Gold Book was the first to require the contractor to state that the notice was given under a specific subclause. It was also the first to relax the time bar, so where it's fair and reasonable that a late submission be accepted, the dispute board has the authority to overrule the 28-day period. It was also the first to require the statement of the contractual or other legal basis of the claim within 42 days in the Gold Book or um, 84 days in the FIDIC 2017 editions. The FIDIC Gold Book was the first to introduce a notice of dissatisfaction with the determination and the FIDIC 2017 editions have adapted this specific wording. It was also the first to set a time bar of 28 days from the notice of dissatisfaction with the determination in which to refer the dispute in writing to the dispute board. And the FIDIC 2017 editions have increased this 28 days to 42 days. I think we've just discussed it already, and I think we're all aware that the FIDIC Gold Book introduced a specific clause for the avoidance of dispute. And the FIDIC 2017 editions have developed this. And in particular, the FIDIC, 27 in, uh, FIDIC 2017 editions include the wording that a joint request to the dispute board to provide assistance may be made at any time except during the period that the engineer is carrying out his or her duties under subclause 3.7, that's agreement or determination. Of course, the avoidance of disputes was uh, never a new concept as such. It was included in the FIDIC, FIDIC Red Book 1999 under subclause 20.2, and it was also included in the general conditions of dispute adjudication agreement at clause four, subparagraph K. And there was also provision in the FIDIC um, Pink Book 2010 in the, the procedural rules, rule two of the uh, procedural rules to the dispute adjudication agreement. So the FIDIC Gold Book was also the first to introduce security for payment, and this has been adapted in the 2017 editions. And it was also the first to reduce the 56 day period of amicable settlement to 28 days, although, of course, the parties can settle at any time they want to. And finally, I think the important point to note is that the FIDIC Gold Book was the first to clarify the route to enforcement of a dispute board decision. So that's my very quick run through. I've done it very quickly because I can see already that we're getting some questions in on the chat function. Thank you. Yes, we are. So um, I would like to um, read um, BJ's um, question. Um, could you kindly share some successful projects where gold book based contracts executed and have done more than 10 of the operation and management period, the problems faced or disputes that arose and how were they dealt with? Thank you, BJ. So, um, I would like to ask first Sebastian and, uh, sorry, uh, Gerard, given his uh, extensive water um, experience, and then we have uh, another question. Thank you, Gerard, please. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Georgiana. Thank you, thank you, Vijay, for that. i uh, just make a, 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 an initial observation. Um, Unfortunately, as with most things with FIDIC, for, for, for clients uh, introduce their own amendments, okay? Uh, oftentimes we see that the operation and service period 
you know, particularly in Irish water, otherwise, or, or reduce from the, the, the 20 year period to five or seven, which I think is a, is a mistake. Uh, and and that, that happens quite regularly. Uh, and I know it's something the FIDIG are looking at. Um, I think in terms of, uh, of an answer to your question, I, I don't have experience of the FIDIG gold uh, having been operated for more than 10 years. And uh, Sebastian has kind of answered that uh, as it's only around since 2008, it might be difficult to, to get to that, that stage. I do have experience of, of if you recall, I, I mentioned pre pre Irish water in Ireland, it used the modified fitting orange uh, approach. So I, I could give you an example there of, of a project in the south of Ireland that was EU cohesion funded uh, funded project in 2003-2004. It was a bundled DBO approach. What, what I meant by bundled was it is a catchment based approach for a, a large river where there's towns and cities on it with little or no treatment capacity. So there, there's 12 or 13, there's five existing and seven new plants bundled into one contract, DB with a 20 year old M period. Um, it, it went very, very well. There were some issues, if you recall in my presentation, I mentioned the asset replacement fund and you know, whether your pump needs to be replaced in the year 13 or year 12. In, in that form of contract, it wasn't for, it wasn't actually called an asset replacement fund. It was called a capital replacement fund, but it was effectively the same thing. There were some issues around that for, for, on some of the plants that were over or under loaded, but they were dealt with uh, efficiently. And, and the plants are in the maintenance reserve fund, maintenance reserve kind of period at the moment, with the GDP handed over in the, in the coming years. And it, it, it's going very, very well, uh, VJ. Issues have been dealt with. The assets are in good, good, good nick, good quality. The consent, the EPA are happy. The consent standards for discharge uh, to the rivers uh, have been achieved. The water quality in the river is vastly improved. So it's, it's gone very, very well. Uh, and I, I'm watch, watching this space closely to see how it goes at actual um, handover. So I hope that answers the question. Thank you. Uh, yes, I haven't um, at the time seen um, Sebastian's comment, but um, yes, he's right. Sebastian, would you please um, share right. with everybody? I just mentioned that uh, um, as uh, the FIDIC uh, Gold Book was launched in 20, uh, uh, 28, uh, we still have time because uh, the, the operation period was assumed to be 20 years long. So. Uh, we can't have a fully a full view on, on successful projects right now, particularly not um, uh, hand, uh, the, the compliance with handback requirements. So there, there is uh, presumably a lot uh, to learn, I guess. Um, so of course, our short-term um, DBO contracts are more have been more usual in the past. So it's two years, five years uh, terms uh, operation. They call it ma ma operation. It's probably maintenance only. Uh, but um, this is probably the existing uh, experience. But um, on my view, uh, the, the long-term experience of 20 years is something which we really need to, to look at because uh, nobody was really uh, ready at that time. And we have had, from the FIDIC perspective, we have had, had uh, a lot of opportunity to look at Irish engineers at the time because it's more as an Irish product at the time because the, all the impact uh, input came, came from Ireland. But uh, nobody really knew what, what it means after 20 years. So in so far, um, there's a lot to, uh, to learn for everybody, uh, including also the EBs, I guess. Um, I know that uh, a friend of mine uh, um, in, in Far East uh, has been sitting on a maintenance board uh, for, for uh, longer periods. And it makes it absolutely different from, uh, from what we uh, have had um, as, as the normal uh, business uh, and the design build and build only contracts. Because actually the the the, 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 the problems are different um, and uh, evolve slowly, but uh, you you will have to to anticipate a lot of things, and that makes uh, such a board I think uh, most successful that you are able to anticipate things um, <clears throat> by experience if you are old enough to have it. <laughs> That's probably the problem. Sure. Some, yeah. some 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 may have. <clears throat> yeah, the Vijay is saying that. Um there is a tendency in India for people to use gold book 
for complicated brownfield uh, projects. Well, I've heard of, of, um, of a couple of gold book years in, on toll roads in, in South Africa. I also heard on, on um, years of gold book in some mining projects in Africa. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to actually get any specific details other than, you know, here is the project, here is the value of it, and uh, we are in the process of, um, of implementing it. Um, Victoria, would you like to add any conclusions for the day? Any specific well, okay, thoughts? I'm, I'm, I'm interested in the um, operational uh, dispute board and the and the, the 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 period of twenty years that they that they need to be available for. And I don't know anybody who's served on a dispute board for twenty years. I mean, Sebastian's point is valid. We're not we're not at the twenty year point yet. But I'd be I'd be interested to talk to somebody that that has been um, a dispute board member for a long term long time on the operational um aspect yeah that would be interesting maybe maybe they don't want to renew with the same person every five years maybe they just look for new people yes Jerome, please Victoria is absolutely correct. I mean, I, I I know one or two that have done it for for for, for blocks of five year periods, but I, I don't know anybody that that has done it for for, for twenty years yet. But I, I have a question, a comment for Victoria. I mean, her her, her slides or her, her her presentation is very interesting. I, one particular aspect that strikes me is is around the the avoidance of disputes, uh, and I wonder would you have a comment on that because. Um, so it's, it's 20.5 in, in fitted cold, and if I don't know, maybe somebody keep me correct, it's a 20.1 in fit, the 2017 uh, fitted yellow, the avoidance of disputes. And as, as we know, the yeah. DAB in the 2017 form has, has become the DAAB. Um, so so it, it seems to me that fitted gold may have been a, a kind of the, the, the driver or the mindset to some degree toward, towards the avoidance of dispute. And I wonder, Victoria, would you, would you have a comment on that or, 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 or thoughts? On that? Yeah, I mean, the avoidance of disputes is absolutely key for dispute boards. I mean, that, that's where its main strength is in, in, my, in my opinion. I think the Gold Book was certainly the first of the FIDIC editions to have a specifically dedicated clause that's called avoidance of disputes but it, it there were avoidance provisions in the red book 1999 beforehand and in um and in the pink pink book as well but you had to look for them um but but now it's really in the gold book it brought it forward into its own dedicated clause and then in the um 2017 editions it's gone even further by calling the dispute board the dispute um, avoidance and adjudication board just to make it very clear that this really valuable function the dispute boards have though there is probably one comment uh, appropriate because uh, the, the 2017 edition is more limitative regarding dispute avoidance activities of the DAB um, in so far as uh, it says that the DAB should not interfere with uh, the authority of the engineer under sub 3.7 uh, during that period of time. This is not uh, something which you find under the gold book. I think it was wise to do that. So we have had a rollback to some extent, um, <laughs> unfortunately, um, and it could be wise to look at it again, uh, because I think it was a very, very good idea to, to, to push it. But uh, of course, it doesn't help you if you are not allowed to do it um, at all, uh, if, if uh, uh, the engineer is already involved. So that's, and, and yeah, that's a yeah, problem. That, that clause raised a few questions already, um, and, and there's quite a lot of debate out there. Well, um, that seems to be all we had time for today. Thank you very much, Victoria, Sebastian, and Gerard. And thank you very much to all of you who have uh, joined us for today. And we look forward to see you all again on 12th of August to our workshop, Dispute Boards in MDB's Finance Contract with Kitty Cohen and Cremona Cotovella. Thank you very much indeed, and see you next time. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.